Conventional shoe design has some serious problems and what I'm about to show you will probably make you think you want to throw your shoes in the bin. But it's not that simple. The barefoot community has some secrets that no one seems to want to talk about. This video is going to be a balanced and evidence-based look at this debate and it'll hopefully help you decide if barefoot shoes are right for you. So if you're new to barefoot shoes, I'll just explain briefly what they are. So they're shoes that have an ultra-thin, ultra-flexible sole that's an even thickness at the front as it is at the heel. And they also have a toe box that's kind of more foot-shaped, it's squarer and wider right at the front of the toe. Basically, it's as close to a shoe that has no kind of features to it. There's no latest shock-absorbing technology they can boast about. And that's why they're often called minimalist shoes. So this discussion has two sides. And on the one hand, you've got the barefoot community who basically think barefoot shoes are the solution to all kinds of problems. They fix your posture. They strengthen your feet and they prevent injury to your hips and your knees and then on the other hand you've got people that think switching to barefoot shoes is basically a very fast way of injuring your feet and that we should be using cushioned padded soles on our shoes now because we're walking on hard surfaces which is not what we've done over our kind of ancestral history so for some reason fashion has dictated that these conventional shoes have this crazy pointed toe at the front. So if you think about your foot, your toes are obviously not pointed, so why are we wedging our feet into these shoes? And uh, I think it's interesting if you look at the kind of history of these style shoes. You had the ruling elites who kind of adopted this fashion of really elongated pointed shoes as a way of kind of saying F you to the working classes who couldn't wear those kinds of shoes because they had to do manual labour. So obviously when we're exploring what's really good for our feet in terms of healthy movement, you'd be hard pressed to find a better example that a pointed shoe is, is exactly the opposite of what we want here. Pointed shoes are actually listed as one of the causes of bunions. So these kinds of shoes are literally damaging our feet. People's feet kind of adapt to this pointed shape as a result of wearing these shoes their whole lives. And what's really interesting though is that your feet will grow back to their natural shape when you switch to barefoot shoes. So the foot strike is one of the first things that comes up when we're discussing barefoot shoes. So conventional shoes with that cushioned sole encourage you to heel strike hard with each footstep because you don't feel the pain that's normally associated with that kind of a hard heel strike. And that additional shock, even though it is cushioned by the sole of the shoe, is what's associated with knee and hip injuries in runners. So in barefoot shoes or without any shoes at all, you're kind of forced to use a forefoot strike or a midfoot strike. Otherwise, your heel just really hurts from that shock. This is, of course, only true on hard paved surfaces. It is perfectly possible to to heel strike on a soft ground, but hold that thought. So when you walk with barefoot shoes or with no shoes at all, it's very clear that your foot wants to kind of bend and push off at the back of the foot stroke, and it takes your weight for longer at the back of your stride, allowing you to come down more gently with your front foot. So if you think about walking about with no shoes on, it's obviously really important that you don't stand on something sharp. So you can see how landing more gently on your front foot is gonna be an advantage there. And you can imagine that through evolution, if that was a trait of ours, it would be favored by the evolutionary process. Interestingly, studies have also shown that wearing barefoot shoes does make your feet stronger than wearing normal conventional shoes. So all that cushioning and padding is basically just making us lazy and our feet are getting weaker. So the third problem is this toe spring, which is where the sole of the shoe is curved up just under your toe. And if you think about the impact of that, what it means is as your back foot is, is rolling forwards, your toes are not able to press down on the floor. So that pivot point is further back than it would be had you been able to use your toes at the back of that foot stroke. So this is kind of encouraging that hard heel strike because it's kind of kicking you forwards each time. And then if you think about the impact of the wedged heel combined with that, what's actually happening is your weight is that much further forward because of the wedge and because you can't press down with your toes so all of this kind of leads to this reinforcement of the idea of the hard heel strike and of course if you're heel striking hard that kind of justifies having a thicker cushioned sole but of course it's the thicker cushioned sole that made you heel strike hard in the first place I was sure that it'll be easier. the problem is we've got a bit of an elephant in the room because heel striking is actually more efficient for walking than forefoot striking and this is what nobody in the barefoot community wants to talk about so interestingly by the time you're running there's no efficiency gain to heel striking so this combined with the evidence that forefoot striking while running reduces the rate of injury is all starting to sound pretty compelling that we should be using a forefoot strike when we're running but there doesn't seem to be much evidence that suggests we shouldn't heel strike when walking so i think the question for me is how hard we should be heel striking and on what surfaces so we obviously know that we spent most of our evolutionary history not wearing shoes. So it stands to reason that if we look at people who still habitually don't wear shoes, we can kind of derive some sense of what our bodies want to do in that situation. But here's the thing, studies actually show that habitually unshod people do still heel strike while walking. And some of those groups, but not all of them, do still heel strike at endurance running speeds. But that's probably very likely because they're running on softer ground. Uh, among these barefoot populations, there seems to be some difference in the speed at which a forefoot strike is selected. And it looks like that 
comes down to a combination of things, including the firmness of the ground and things like the total volume of running done per week. So the soft ground combined with the efficiency is obviously why we've maintained this heel pad that our great ape ancestors have evolved. So we know that habitually unshod populations all switch to a forefoot strike to deal with the increased collision force. So that's a combination of the firmness of the ground and the speed. So by the time we're talking about a full sprint, there's nobody who's left heel striking because the impact force is just too great and everybody has switched to the forefoot strike. So it looks like what's happening is habitually barefoot populations are all switching to a forefoot strike based on a combination of volume, speed and the firmness of the ground. But here's the thing, they're all doing that without wearing shoes at any of those speeds. They just simply react and change the forefoot strike. They don't wear shoes for one condition and not another, they're just barefoot the whole time. So I think this is what it all really boils down to. If we know we should be heel striking on soft ground, how do we know if we should be heel striking on hard pavement that we're all walking on now? So I think this is just one of those things that if you just take your shoes off and walk on a hard pavement, it very quickly becomes clear that you can't heel strike on hard pavement in bare feet. And what you'll notice when you're doing that is that you naturally modify your foot stroke to avoid those hard heel strikes. So using our barefoot intuition, we can see exactly how we should be walking in bare foot. So what this basically means is we're faced with this conscious decision. We're faced with, in evolutionary terms, a very, very rapid environmental difference. We're now walking on ultra hard surfaces that we haven't really ever had to do before. So do we just add more padding to our shoes to deal with this? Or do we do what our ancestors have done and just let our bodies modify the way we walk according to what we're walking on? So here's the thing, a lot of barefoot enthusiasts really advocate a proper forefoot strike while walking. Now I've worn barefoot shoes for six years and I don't think I've actually modified to a full forefoot strike while walking. My heel does still play a role in my natural foot strike. It's just a very gentle one. It's almost, I guess, maybe a mid foot strike where it's kind of like the whole of my foot is just coming down on the ground at the same time and I'm immediately pushing down through my calf muscle and down through the ball of my foot to take that weight in that strike. So my heel really isn't getting any of that major impact. But on the same note, I'm definitely not just prancing around on the front of my feet, which I think is actually pretty awkward. And uh, you know, you do look a bit weird when you're walking like that. So my personal opinion is that barefoot shoes are actually really beneficial. They are kind of forcing us to think about about the way we walk and, and drawing our attention to how we're walking. I like the way that basically walking like this increases strength, it increases our foot strength and it increases the strength in our calves because your calf muscles take on the role of absorbing that shock instead of the shock just going through to your knees and your hips and into the sole of your shoe. And I think barefoot shoes absolutely do promote good foot health. I mean, how can they not when we're comparing to a pointed shoe that we know causes bunions and deforms your feet? I'm actually pretty sure that my toes have spread out since using barefoot shoes and really annoyingly I don't have a before picture from six years ago but my wife and I definitely think that my toes are now much wider and more spaced out and more naturally foot shaped than they used to be. So walking barefoot or in barefoot style shoes forces you to engage with your feet and it builds strength and mobility and it encourages your feet to be their natural shape. What's really striking when you first switch to barefoot shoes is just how much your calf muscle is doing the work. It's just intuitive as soon as you do it you, you, you immediately take the weight off your heel and the calf muscle takes over and the first couple of days your calf muscle will absolutely be burning so you know what's going on. And it's an interesting reminder that all of the energy that your calf muscle is dealing with there was actually energy that was just being transmitted through your joints and by that cushioned sole in the normal shoes. So yeah, it does feel a little bit like it's more effort to walk in a barefoot shoe, but training of any kind is more effort. You have to put some effort in to get stronger. Things like strength training and weightlifting all involve more effort than not doing those things, but they result in more strength. I guess it's a little bit like a martial art. You're improving your form and your strength a little bit every day through every step that you take. It's like a discipline that you need to choose to persist with because it is that bit more effort, but the reward is there. It's quite interesting in terms of sprinting after six years wearing barefoot shoes. I can break into a sprint in my normal shoes anywhere, anytime. I don't have any issues or injuries. I can just go flat out and it feels great. It feels like my feet are doing this incredible thing. All of this goes way deeper than I've looked at here as well. There are things like anterior tilt and glute activation and all kinds of other uh, posture related things that come into play here. And the Grown and Healthy YouTube channel is a great place to go further and learn more about this kind of stuff. There are a couple of other companies that do barefoot shoes, but I really like the way Vivo Barefoot, this is not a sponsored video, by the way, I'm just, just, I just happened to have used these over the years. I really like the way that because 
when you fit these, you're supposed to have a good chunk of space above your toe, in front of your toe. Normally, if you were to size a shoe like that, your foot would slide forward because generally most shoes are not designed to stop your foot sliding forward. They're just designed to just be kind of padded and you shove your foot in and, and people tend to have them quite sloppily tied up around the ankle because it's not needed as part of the way it works. With a barefoot shoe, there's so much space at the front, you need to hold your foot at the back of the shoe. And all the Vivo barefoot shoes that I've had have had this really well-designed, part at the ankle. They sort of prioritize this part of the shoe to make sure that when you tie it up, you're actually kind of containing your ankle at this part of the shoe so it doesn't slide forward. And that means this wide, big toe box with more space around your toes, it has got that space available for your toes always to push forward and spread out into. I don't think people really kind of appreciate that important part of a barefoot shoe design. And Vivo Barefoot seem to really understand that even with their sort of less boot-like lower shoe designs, they've always got this prominent kind of part that comes up onto the top of your foot to, to help it stop it sliding forward. There is a refer a friend scheme that I've got in my account, so I'll pop that link in there and you can get 20% off if you use that link. There has been a study of runners who switched to barefoot shoes and actually ended up injuring themselves. I think if you were to spend your whole life wearing normal shoes and then switch to barefoot shoes and, and run in them, I think because you're not used to them and obviously you're running and you're going straight into that, then you know there's a, there definitely is a good chance that you're going to injure yourself. But I think if you're just talking about walking and you work your way into it slowly and you're intentional about it and, and you're being gentle with your feet while you're transitioning into this kind of way of walking, uh, I think you'll be fine. I did that six years ago. I haven't looked back. I never got any injuries. I took it fairly slowly. I was very conscious that my calf muscles were doing a lot of the work and I was very conscious not to, to heel strike hard because I could feel it very, very obviously. So I think if you listen to your feet and you don't push it, if it does hurt, then back off. And there are tons of really good videos about how to kind of minimize the chance of injury when you do switch to these kinds of shoes. And I'll link to those in the description as well. If you've enjoyed this kind of look at alternative ways of doing things that we kind of take for granted, you'll enjoy this look at waterproof coat materials because there are some underdogs on the scene there as well. And I'll see you there.